Hello, everyone, and hey, there we go. Now you can hear me. Welcome into the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Tom Callahan here, and this week joined by Jay Krupp and Josh Petrantonio. And uh, we're just going to break right into it, guys, because we're doing some math here, trying to figure out uh, not only can this team clinch the Central Division, which it can with six points on the weekend, not only can this team clinch the FPHL, with 10 points, which could happen if Binghamton stumbles. Uh, now, Jay, you just kind of brought to my attention something else that you guys have kind of had as a little bit of a personal goal here, but is actually within reach for you guys right now. Let's talk about that. First of all, what is that goal? Um, it's the all-time winningest team in the Federal Hockey League history. Uh, Josh and I completed that in 2018-19 with Carolina. Um, so, you know, when we were building this team, uh, Josh and I were talking about it a bit and, you know, definitely had the team to do it, and now we're knocking on the door. So as I'm trying to do some quick math here, the River Dragons have – so it's a 56-game season. We have nine games left, 27 points. By my – my very grade school mathematics, uh, I think you need 25 of those 27 points to beat that mark. So there's your bar. That uh, went out. Yeah, basically. Just went out. Why not? It's, not, it's only no nine deal. games. We All went right. on a 16 game rip earlier this year. What are you so concerned about? Actually, Petro, you and I did the math at the time when the streak was broken, and we said, oh, we got time to win 19 more before the regular season ends. <laughs> so, yeah, we did. Yeah, That's right, but, uh, right now it's so the Tim Hortons win streak is at six. We've got nine left. We can get to 15. We got, what did he say, 27, 25 out of 27? We got yeah, 25 out of 27 points. Yeah, who cares? Let's go win a championship yeah. and none of the numbers matter. That's, well, you know what? That is the one number <laughs> that matters. Yeah. At the end of it all is, uh, are you number one? Did you win your last game of the season? Yes. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, that's always the big one. So because it means you either missed the playoffs or won it all. So yeah, yeah, that's uh, that's the way to go. All right. So well, guys, thanks for joining us here tonight. We're gonna talk a little bit about that because really your fate's in your own hands. At this point, you can lock out Carolina this weekend. First and foremost, to be able to do that, really in March. I mean, we're not to April yet. That's a pretty big accomplishment. Yeah, I mean, obviously, uh, we've kind of kept our nose down and and kind of kept to the grind ourselves a little bit up until probably I would say the last week or two of the season, we've kind of been looking around the league and, and looking at um, how everyone else is doing and stuff like that. But up until that point, it was just, let's focus on us. Let's focus on our business and the rest will take care of itself. And I think that's a, a pretty good mindset to go into, uh, especially for the, the big portion of your season. Obviously it helps to get out ahead and not have to worry about chasing other teams because then obviously you are a little bit paying more attention to the scoreboard watching. But, I mean, for us, it's just been we got out ahead and we kind of just took the reins and it was like, hey, we're setting the pace. Good luck catching us. Um, and, I mean, yeah, we've been been rolling, rolling pretty steady ever since. And that's kind of the beauty of it. I mean, Jay, you guys do control your own destiny. You know, it's up to you. It's not up to anybody else. You don't need any help to clinch anything. It's just take care of business and you will. Yeah, no, yeah, it really, you know, we talked about it all year, Callie, you and I. I mean, it's totally up to us. Uh, if we show up and play the way we should, no one can touch us. I uh, Somebody asked me that the other day. We were talking about it. I said, well, what team is most likely to beat the River Dragons in the playoffs? And I said, the River Dragons. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's pretty much been our MO all year is we're betting on us. I mean, we're not we're not looking for handouts. We're not looking for help. We're we're betting on the guys, the twenty twenty two guys in that locker room, and we've been betting on them the whole way through. And we keep betting on each other and betting on ourselves and sticking together. It's it, it's really everything's in our hands. Which I like control of my own destiny. So I can't imagine you'd want it any other way as a player, right? I mean, hey, well, if you, you get know, a couple that's... bounces here and there, it might be a little bit easier. Sure, but sure, if you're in control of it, way the world's on your shoulders. What are you going to do with it? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's why you play hard. Is you, I, I firmly believe if you play hard, you make your own luck, you make your own breaks. Absolutely, you got to play the game the right way, and um, I, I, I know that's what Boomer's been preaching to you guys the whole time. And it was interesting. We were talking today. I know he's not here for the radio show, but we taped the TV show earlier today, and you know he said now's the time of year where he's kind of wrestling with some guys might want some rest, 
Some guys might not want the rest who need the rest. Like you're kind of fighting it both ways, you know. Some guys are going to want a day off, but some guys are going to want to play and and they probably should take a seat. And um, you know, so how do you go about mitigating that? You guys are both part of the leadership core of this team. I mean, you're the, you're the veteran players. I mean, what's it like in the room for you to deal with that? Uh, I mean, <clears throat> obviously we're all we're all adults. We're all professionals. We've all been playing this game a long time. Um, I don't care how smart. A doctor a coach or anything is I'm a firm believer that everybody knows their body their best whether they're gonna admit it to you or not is a different story um, but when it push comes to shove it, it's it's in the decision of the guy um, I mean big picture guys got to be smart we've got a lot of smart guys in that locker room that are looking big picture hey it's not about accolades it's not about individual stats it's about winning a championship what's in the best interest of the team is me taking a night off now going to help me down the stretch stuff like that and I mean got a great coaching staff great training staff great ownership everybody's on the same page with all that all the players are on the same page so it's it's really just communication and we've been really good about being open with all the guys that are banged up here and there and, and guys aren't scared to be like hey I'm I'm banged up and worry about um losing their spot because that's just the kind of group we have. I mean, it's just, it's not first line, second line, third line. It's, it's one team mentality and, and that's the way we've been rolling all year. And that's the way it's going to continue to roll. You know, it's, it's funny, Jay, your dad, Jeff, always the, the name he always throws out is Wally Pip. So, and I'm sure, you know, because you've probably heard him say it a million times, but for anyone who doesn't know who Wally Pip is, Wally Pip was the Yankees first baseman right up until some guy named Lou Gehrig started the streak some guy some guy named Lou Gehrig started the streak so that's why when people say you're Wally pipped but I mean it's so on this team what Petro you're telling me and, and Jay you can talk about this a little bit is that that doesn't exist like there's some security and a feeling of that security I imagine has to go a long way yeah I mean I think yeah obviously it's it's you know I've been on teams where you don't know if you're making it to Friday and I mean for us it was you know again it goes back to recruiting we build the team a lot different here we get guys that want to be here for the for the full year and are committed here and then want to move up or they're just here and been here for the last few years and they don't want to they're happy here they could probably move up but they're happy here and um, I mean, just look at the roster movement throughout some other teams in the league and then look at our roster movement. Like, it seems like we've had a lot of roster moves, but over a season, like, we've had the almost the entire bulk of our team the entire year. Like, we've had, what, maybe two or three, three new guys? Four. That's but, it. Yeah, yeah, and so, you know, it's – um so, you know, when we recruit, it's like, you know, we – I talk to these guys and I'm like – you know we're you're, we're building we're going for the championship like that's it and you either want to be a part of it or you don't so i mean you get the right guys in there they don't you know they don't want to take uh a, a shift off or you know not they everyone is here for one thing and that's a win and um i think that really goes a long way with the way we built our team it's like you know you're here for a reason they know they're here for a reason we're not just gonna get rid of you just a bring some guy, someone in to, you know, ch make changes. I mean, you know, they're invested to us, we're invested in them. Like, that being said, I mean, you got to go out and compete. But, you know, compete, you know, most of it's just coming from hard work in your heart. So it's, you know, it's pretty obvious the guys that want to be here and don't, and the ones that don't are, aren't here, you know. Well, and it's and it comes back in a lot of ways to Boomer as well. You know, he's a guy, he's one as a player, he's one as a coach. He's been in some different spots, and it's kind of it's funny sometimes. But it's, even to me, when when Boomer gets to the old, hey, don't worry, everybody relax, it's okay, <laughs> yeah. everybody just kind of yeah. let's just let's take a deep breath right here. And I, I you know, I kind of laugh because I can't imagine what Boom was like as a player on a way to winning a championship. But it's just it's, yeah. it's, it's interesting to hear. Yeah, yeah. I mean, obviously, all of his experience is life hockey and. And everything like that, like everybody else, it shapes who you are. But it would be interesting to be a fly on the wall back when he was stay out of my yard and, and, and <laughs> I can't imagine he was the the happy go lucky la di da, doesn't scream, doesn't freak out when he's headbutting guys in the head, yeah, <laughs> punching guys on the bench. 
<laughs> well, the, the my favorite photo, and it's the one in the hallway by our locker room, is just him tied up with some guy with a linesman in between, and he's just looking up and grinning. Yeah. You know, like yeah. it's just that is that is quintessential boomer, I think, to me. And so, um, you know, that's just one of those moments that that I kind of think defines that. But I mean, that so that allows you guys to kind of take on that personality, if you will. And now by this time of the year, as you said, Petro, everybody's been here. So you have your personality in the room now. You know what the personality of this group is. And I think that, you know, that goes a long way, too, towards a team. I'm not going to throw any names out there, Carolina, that had half their roster gone from maybe, what, Christmas to the middle of last month, and all of a sudden they're trying to put it all back together. Yeah, and I mean, Jerome's a, a big believer in uh, in the big picture. I know <laughs> Jeff uh, and, and Jay probably doesn't like it very much, but Jerome's a big my teams are going to be 500 at Christmas. I'm going to run them the way I want them, and then I'm going to turn them over to the players. And I think we've we've definitely overachieved the 500 at Christmas at this point. Um, and he kind of kept the reins a little bit longer this year just because of the way we were going and, and the way everything was going. But <clears throat> probably about a month ago now, he, he kind of came in and said, hey, this is your guys' team. You guys take the reins from here on out. I'm still... I'm still leading it, but you guys are towing the rope now. My my job's done. This is all up to you guys. I can give you the game plan. I can give you this, Thank but you. it's up to you guys to <laughs> yeah. execute it. Well, and I I mean, you know, that's that's no small feat, right? To to uh, have in a, any pro sport, let alone hockey, like to have a coach who just says, you know what, I trust you guys. You just don't get that automatically. No, no you don't. But I mean, it's. I mean, he's the one that led us to that point. He yeah. knows when it's time. Yeah. And we trust him when when he says that. And if he didn't believe in us or think it was time, he wouldn't have said it. Well, I think I'll tell you what, let's grab a break because I got to get a commercial break in here. When we come back, I, I got a couple of questions I want to throw at you guys. Uh, and also, uh, we talked about the, the playoff chase right now. River Dragons heading out on the road. We're going to talk about Legends Weekend as well coming up. So stay tuned for that. Uh, but in the meantime, it is the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Josh Petrantonio, Jay Krupp joining us in studio. We're back with more in a moment. Back on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show, Tom Callahan joined by Josh Petrantonio, Jay Krupp in studio here. Boomer's got the night off. It's like his second night off in a month. I don't know what's going on with that guy. He's ducking me. I think his daughter got married this weekend or something. Yeah, is that what not, happened? Not, not too sure, but nice. Yeah, no, he. Uh, I think he needs a little R and R. Yeah, that uh, that was. A, you know what? Congratulations, first of all, to the family, and uh, kudos to Boomer and Jay. You got to be behind the bench, and and you were kind of running things to get us through while Boomer was uh, not there. Again, you picked up your first pro coaching win last year, so. That you already had that out of the way, but I mean, what being behind the bench again this deal. year? Not a, <laughs> no, but no big deal. <laughs> three and zero. Oh. Uh, yeah. Just gonna throw it out there. You're not three and zero, oh, dude. You lost in court last year. I have, I have no <laughs> idea what I am, to be honest. There was a, you lost when Boomer was suspended last year. All right. Remember? No. In port. Okay, you want to know why I remember that game? In the third period, we went down and gave up. Four straight power play goals to Port Huron to start the third period. Oh, I remember that. Yeah, now I remember that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I remember a Way Gatorade jug getting chucked, but yeah, four straight power play Should goals. Should empty the stick rack. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, oh, well. That, uh, I, you look, there'll be plenty of time for you to empty plenty of stick racks. Don't worry. Yeah, you got, oh, you got yeah. time. But uh, what, oh, what's the best all time snap you've ever seen from a coach? Oh. That, that's. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man! It's got to be an Andre story. A hundred percent. Which that guy's a man, though. Yeah, he like is. That. He is. He's a man. He's intense. Intense coach. I love. Oh, play. Okay. Love. I'll tell this one. So this is a a practice, and uh, he we had this um, this guy coming to skate with us, like a local guy, and we were like, we warned him. We're like, hey, like stuff hasn't really been going well he's coach is kind of a little nuts blah 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 like if he starts snapping like get out of his way and put your head down so he's like yeah yeah yeah. like how bad could it be whatever so like all, literally all it takes with him is someone missing a pass in practice so pass gets missed this kid this poor kid is sitting on the bench andre comes over fresh brand new stick Breaks it into six pieces in five swings, literally on both sides of this kid's head. 
and he's got his head down the entire time, and pieces of the stick are just whizzing past his head, <laughs> smacking <laughs> off the back of the glass. <laughs> it was, and he just kept his head down the whole time. <laughs> and then he takes the like six inch knob that he's got in his hand left. It was literally like clockwork. Like it was just boom, 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 boom. <laughs> and he hucked it up in the stands. And the kid picks his head up, and you can just see like the fear of God in his eyes. And he's just like, oh my, what just happened? I've never seen someone be able to break sticks so clean and so perfect. Like the form. Like, <laughs> No, I'm like, I'm serious. I mean, I and then like and, I, and then funny. on top of that, like, do you know how hard it is to break a stick when it's only like as long as your arm? When it gets down to like that, and he just made it look so yeah. easy. And he was so crisp with it. Yeah. It was so smooth. Like it, it was it was never a... Uh, like you know how sometimes like you'll hit it and it'll crack and then you gotta hit it again to snap. It was never it was always clean. Clean and that piece was gone. Yeah. <laughs> I loved it. Loved it. That was now what he didn't tell you is he would score his sticks. Yeah, just yeah. So, yeah. yeah. we <laughs> thought about that. When we started checking them out. Yeah, no, <laughs> we did. No. He just, yeah, it was an art for him. That's that's something. I always um, go back to the uh, Jim Playfair. Uh, oh yeah, you know, ripping the, the shirt bench. off. Yeah, yeah. 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 ripping yeah. the shirt yeah. off, emptying the bench. That was always a good one. And we were talking actually last week when when Jeff Group was in here. We talked about the uh, Sean Feld uh, with Koharski have another donut. Uh, oh, yeah. That one came up as well because apparently Jeff was right there for that, so he was a part of the melee. The melee. It's a melee. <laughs> well. You know what? You know what? Old story we were just talking about the other day is uh, was it Friday or Saturday when Morsey was uh, doing his little dance on the ice there? Friday. So we went back to the uh, <laughs> oh yeah the fiddler making fun of Bexa. And uh, Elaine Vigneault just dying laughing on the bench and not being able to hold his composure. <laughs> That's what that reminded me of. That was just priceless. I So Fids was on the team in Nashville. One of the funniest, like, best guys to have around because you could not keep a straight face around that guy, especially if he didn't want you to. Like, if you wanted to break the tension, he was going to break the tension. And he was going to do it with something funny. It just... But he was just the most, like, he could deadpan make fun of anybody, and it would just <laughs> set you off. He was so yeah, good at it. Yeah, we've got one of those. His name's Slachetka. <laughs> nice. <laughs> I'd, I'd like to see that in action. I oh, think it's hilarious. He, I, I, intentionally, unintentionally, he is just one of the funniest human beings to be around. Like, <laughs> genuinely makes you, like, belly laugh. You can be in the worst mood in the world, and, like, he'll just say something, and you just look at him, and it's like, all right, dude. <laughs> you got me. Yeah. But it's good to have those guys around, right? Like you need oh, yeah. that. Yeah. To. You got to break the tension a little bit. So, well, so while we're talking about NHL stuff, um, I had a couple of questions I wanted to ask you guys. John Cooper made a comment. I thought this was interesting. As players, how would you feel about this? He said, if the NHL would take five minute three on three and make it seven minute three on three overtime, that would be perfect. What would you think about two more minutes on overtime as players, three on three? And then shoot out. And then shoot out, yeah. Just extend overtime by two minutes. <laughs> would would more games end in overtime? Would it would it make a huge difference to go to seven? I would say it would prevent thirty percent of the games that go into a shootout from going into a shootout. It's kind of a significant difference. I mean, yeah, I would. It would definitely end more games. I don't think it would end I love ha- the, half the games that go to a shootout. What are their records in three on three, Tampa? So I'd like to see if that factors. I mean, yeah. comment. Well, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, here's the other thing that you add an uh, like you got to factor into is like five minutes to seven minutes. Now the refs are a little bit looser. Now maybe they're calling it more like normal. So then maybe you have more power plays, and there's there's so many factors that go into it. I mean, to me, just get it over with. I mean, especially regular season, mm. you're fighting for – I mean, I really think the NHL needs to adopt the 3-2-1 system because the 2-1 the when a regulation win counts as two points and an overtime win counts as two points, what benefit do you have from – And you're in the row column. Yeah, I mean, I, I I think that's something that hopefully will get fixed soon because that's that that's a big miss on their part. You're handing out fifty percent more points in some games, right? Yeah. Um. Now, if 
you're going to do the seven minute overtime and do the three, two, one system. I like adding the two minutes because it gives you an extra two minutes to win it in a real hockey situation and not skills competition. Yeah. Um, but as it stands two one, I, I, I don't see any difference between five and seven minutes. Mm. Jay, what would you do? Um, Flip a coin. <laughs> yeah, it's exciting. Three on three is exciting in the NHL. I'm not sure if I don't. I don't know. Some games it would matter have another two minutes. Some games it wouldn't. Would you it's do cool. it here at the FPHL? Yeah, I would do it here. But the second Why don't we I, have a shootout the before second, the game? The second I throw oh, out the old Scott Brand idea. The second I throw out seven and nine up front, it's over anyway. Right. So I mean, you know, pick five, seven, three doesn't matter. Second shift, it's we're we're going home. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. I like it. I like the confidence. Actually, I mean, hey, Petro, you've been. I, by the way, you're welcome. I called your third goal a hat trick goal. Oh, thanks. On the highlight, Thank because you. somehow your second goal, I don't even remember who got credit for it. Now maybe Jammer. Somehow until after the game and they had to fix it. I'm like how? I. I, I honestly weird, wasn't weird even situation. really paying attention. But that's why nobody threw any hats, because they thought it was your second goal of the night. That's all right. Yeah, I probably he is short on hats. I probably right should have had. I probably should have had six or seven. So, no. I mean, but I mean, seven points in two games. I mean, that's okay. Not bad. It's uh, average. Yeah, I was. It was all right. Nine in your last four. I mean, you're doing okay. I'm not, right. I'm not hurting for points, <laughs> but as long as we keep winning, I don't care about points. Yeah. Well, I mean, the thing that's nice about this team, too, is it is the depth, right? I mean, J-Mac is obviously an unstoppable force right now, but you're going. Doze is going. Doze is going. Which, Storage and Wicks got going this weekend. Yeah. yeah. Jammer's putting up points. I mean, literally everyone's just kind of Pick rolling. Pick your right poison. Now. Yeah. I mean, and that's I, – I had a conversation with Jerome about it today. I'm like, he had a – a chat with us last week, and he said, Teal and Gray, we need more consistency. <laughs> and we came out this oh, weekend, we'll and we're like, all right, three-headed monster, pick your poison. I mean, All I had to do was ask. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, what was he Ask doing and you shall you? receive. Yeah. Um, no, I mean, it's 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 great, because I've been on teams that were very one-line heavy scoring-wise, and playoff time, I mean, realistically, there's a lot more line matching going on in playoffs than in the regular season. And if you've got all three lines that can score, you're pretty tough to pretty tough to handle when it comes to another team. Like who are you gonna shut down? Yeah. Realistically. Like obviously J Max got the big target, but if the other two lines are are flying, he still somehow quietly with everybody on him gets Three, four points a night. <laughs> like, yeah, it's insane. Yeah, like at it, the end of the game on uh, on Sunday, uh, I saw like the stat sheet, and I'm like, this guy had three assists tonight. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> <laughs> you, you know who that reminds you of is uh, Keith Gretzky. Used to be like that. I, I saw him playing throughout the minors, and he was playing at the time of the Fort Wayne Comets, uh, and. I swear to God, I don't think I called his name twice the whole night. And at the end of the night, he had four assists. Like, where did he come from? I don't even remember realizing he had the puck more than twice. Yeah. And it's just like that kind of, I feel like J-Mac can have those sneaky good nights like that. Yeah, every night. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> Some nights are a little louder than others, but. Yeah. You know, yeah. That, uh, I mean, it's pretty nice to have him going. All right, so speaking of guys, crazy scoring touch, Ovechkin, does he catch Gretzky? I'm saying yes. Oh, he's going to play until he does. Yeah. I mean. He'll be in a wheelchair on the wing on the power play. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Still ripping yeah, a pass he, I, I, Like, he will not retire until he passes Gretzky. I, I, yeah. And, I mean, I think you said that Washington said he's a capital until he, yeah, until the he gets the record. Yeah, the GM there, remember? He turned right around the deadline. So he's I'm, like, he'll, he'll break the record. In a yeah. Coach, and, uh, honestly, I think Gretzky wants that. I think that he wants – somebody else to come in and and be able to pass on that so that way it's not seen as this unachievable no one's ever going to catch his points like points he's so far gone it's not even funny but individual goals assists stuff like that i mean why not pass the torch on and let it continue down the road my favorite crazy stat about gretzky and there's a lot of them is that he retired with more assists than anyone else had points yeah. 
that's insane. Yeah. Like if you took all the goals away, yeah, just get rid of them. Say he had a high hockey IQ. Yeah. He was he was okay that guy. Um, man, that's just that's wild to think about. And I I know it was a little more wide open back then, but you know what? Can't every compared generation. Well, every other like. guy of that era had that chance You're too. Right. right. It's you different. know? No, yeah. absolutely. And I mean, uh, Jeff was just talking about it. Like Austin Matthews, they they broke down his career to this point on Ovechkin's up until the point that Matthews is at. And I mean, Matthews is on on a better pace than Ovechkin. And obviously with age and injuries and all that kind of stuff, obviously you can't keep up the pace for your entire career. But I mean, I I think the new wave of players and, and the different skill levels and stuff like that now, like these records that seemed completely out of the question and unachievable, I mean, guys are taking care of their body, bodies better now than ever. I mean, guys are going to be playing longer. Obviously the game's more physical and stuff like that. But I mean... Trending in a new direction. Yeah, it is. It's a lot different. All right, let's grab a break. We'll come back with more here in just a moment. J. Croup, Josh Petrantonio. I'm uh, I'm Tom Callahan. If I get that out of my mouth, let's just go to a break. All right, back with more of the Behind the Bench Coaches Show in just a moment. And we're back at the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Tom Callahan, along with the captain, Josh Petrantonio, and the one, the only, the man, the myth, the legend, J. Croup. Uh, just talking some hockey Jackie here <laughs> and guys, we're, we're playing Port Huron this weekend. We haven't even seen these guys. It has been almost a calendar year since we've seen the Port Huron Prowlers. We get to see them this weekend. Finally, that's kind of a wild thought. Same Prowlers we've been seeing for the last, for the last seven years. Yeah. <laughs> Not much has changed. Gotta work saying. on that power play. Right? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. We're all work on it. So you're saying under the Matt Graham uh, led program, not much is going to look different. I, nah, they, it's it's the same roster they've. Yeah, they work hard. They play good at home, yeah. man. They're gonna come. Yeah, they got a point to prove. We gotta bring it. They're gonna be. They're good. They can score. You know, they can score. They play well at home. You know, they got veterans over there that play good hockey, and yeah, we gotta show up. Yeah, I mean, they're always a team that always, always, always shows up. Gives you a run for your money. They play fast pace. Go, go, go! Hockey. I mean, it's it's consistent. It's what you see is what you get over there, and you know what's coming. It's just you gotta you gotta beat them at their own game. <laughs> Perhaps the tiniest neutral zone in all of pro hockey. It's like it's a right three there, stride, yeah. three stride neutral zone. I actually played in one smaller in Wheeling. Really? Oh, <laughs> oh, mm. yeah. They they had two cement walls at the end of uh, the end boards, and literally you have your center circle and then the blue line. There is less than a foot between the center circle and the blue lines. That's wild. Yeah. That's in the new one? In the West or, Banco, yeah. Really? Yeah. I didn't realize it was that short. Yeah. Huh. I've only been there once. I don't really remember a whole heck of a lot about it, but I've obviously been to McMoran a lot more, but that's interesting. I know. I think McMoran is, what, 165 or 170 feet long, whereas modern ice surfaces are supposed to be 200. Mm-hmm. So I actually don't know if ours is 200. That, that'd that be a good one. I don't know. I'll shoot a puck tomorrow and see if it hits the glass. There you go. <laughs> don't do that. <laughs> don't, don't, don't do that. Um, that's, that's an interesting thought. I, now I'm trying to think of all the different small neutral zones. Quirky, yeah. All the different quirky Knoxville. arenas. Look at the tangents. Yeah. We get off no, on actually. Here. Yeah. <laughs> like there's a lot of uh, arenas that weren't purpose built. Have you guys ever played in Asheville? No, I heard their about building. It. It's that place is wild. Cause it was built for basketball. <laughs> And the floor is kind of sunk in. So all they have is bleachers around the top. It's literally an overhang. And then oh, really? they have to bring stands in down on the ice. But the problem is the stands are so far from the ice, you can't see what's going on. But if you sit in any of the seats that are up top in this bowl, if it were a basketball floor, you could see the whole floor. But because it's a hockey rink and it's bigger, no matter where you sit, you will lose part of the ice surface. It is such a terrible oh, building. Oh, that's unfortunate. To watch uh, a hockey game. What about the Hera Arena? I played there my rookie year. I've never been to that oh, one. Oh, man. Well. Is that a treat or what? <laughs> the benches are in the corner. Yeah. <laughs> you got to skate like half your shift is just getting to the offensive zone. <laughs> then by the time you get to the slot, you're like, I got to get back. It's going to take me six years to change. It's crazy. Wow. It was fun, though. Wayne Gretzky got his first professional point there. Really? Yeah. Western Hockey. Dayton, against the Dayton Gems. Interesting. On the road. I like it. Fun yeah. fact of the day. Yeah. 
That uh, I've seen some of the old, the old, like old IHL barns. Like Port Huron was one. Yeah, uh, hasn't but, changed. Except for new seats. Nope. Muskegon uh, was another one. Kalamazoo and some of those buildings. I remember. Well, in Port Huron, at least there's penalty boxes now because yeah. there never used to be. Oh. So chairs. There was one penalty box, and it was next to the scorekeeper. And then I remember being the visiting team going in there. You had to serve a penalty by sitting on your own bench. And when the penalty ended, you had to hop on the ice and hop back off the ice. No way. That's yes. And that's how, because they only have one penalty box. So they would put whoever was in there. But if there were two penalties, then somebody had to sit on their own bench. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> wow. And in Kalamazoo, uh, there were the benches were across from one another and the penalty box is around the same side. So of course the home team has the penalty box right next to its bench. The visiting team has the penalty box across the ice. So there were some I serious like hometown that, advantages. Yeah, yeah. I kind of like that. Yeah. There's some crafty there's an advantage uh, of taking a guy to the box with you now. Right. Right. Yeah. You got that little, you got to <laughs> either jump into play or you got a long way to go to yeah. get across the ice. It's kind of interesting, but uh, it, some of these arenas are just crazy. So what's your favorite ones that you guys have played in? Jay, what's your favorite arena you've ever played in? Oh, that's a good question. It could be a historical Columbus arena. Columbus Civic Center, or... baby. Nice. I love the boards here. Everyone hates them. <laughs> but uh, not Columbus, probably. Cornwall was nice. I love playing in Cornwall. It was new. But if we're going Old Barnes, I'm probably going McMoran. Okay. Yeah, if we're going Old, like, or Danville. When they, but now it's new too, new boards, new glass. Yeah, yeah. I would say McMoran old, Cornwall new. Okay. I don't even know where to begin with this. Oh, man. Um, yeah, I'm going to have to pass on this. I can't even think right now. All right, we'll, we'll come back to you. Yeah. Like back. at the end of the last segment, just blurt it out. Okay. When we I'll get just there. name two random so, rings. Right. Mine is actually really, really easy because I got to play a game on the 1980 Olympic ice. It, like I have it. done that as well. So that's no contest that's for me. That was the coolest thing I've ever done. Yeah, that's cool. So and I, I, I played in NHL arenas and everything, but nothing matches the goosebumps I got being an American oh, kid yeah. playing on that ice. So yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yep. Won't forget that one. Yeah, I think McMoran's got a lot of history, man. It does. It, that's why I like playing there. It does. It the, really does. The old IHL and. A lot of those like Flint up there, although yeah. I heard that arena got better because I don't think it could get worse. And, um, but the Firebirds are up there now. But yeah, and what? And then uh, was it Doc? He did he call Doc games Emmerich, there? Yeah, it yeah. was Port Huron with like, the flag. Guy's a legend, man. Yeah, like <laughs> yeah, it's it's pretty neat to hear like the history of some of these guys and where they've been, like just all over. Yeah, and players who turn into GMs down the road and. Mm. You know, one day we'll be telling Josh Petrantonio stories. And you're like, <laughs> can you believe that guy used to play in Columbus? Look at him now. He's the head of such and such. And, you know, that's, yeah, that's that would not be a pipe dream. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you want the Leafs job, though. That's the most thankless job. I would world. love that job. No, absolutely. I would not. take it. Heartbeat. I can't imagine what it would be like there or Montreal to have to be the GM. He's so awesome. Willie would be great at it. He speaks French. There you go. But as we found out on this very coach's show, in case you missed that episode, his uncle is Felix Botvin. Yeah. The old Leafs goalie. I didn't know that. Yes. His uncle, Felix the Cat. No way. Yes. Yes. So it's his mom's. (laughs) Yeah. We we SD. Um, So it's his his mom's brother. uh, Because he was telling us on the show, he said that his dad was always calling Felix for advice about when Will Willie was growing up, being a goaltender, like equipment and training and all that stuff. Yeah, wow, that's, that's wild. Uncle. I had no idea. Yeah, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm like, huh, you never know. So that's, uh, so, I mean, now, hey. Well, it, now you know. <laughs> now, well, now you know. So at the end of the day, um, geez, I can't imagine. Like, have you guys ever had, like, a famous anything in any sport or whatever? Like, the closest I get is I had a cousin who – Tried to make it on the Nike tour for golf. Like, that's about the biggest thing I've got. Do you have any of that that runs in the family or famous athletes? Uh, my cousin played a handful of games in the NHL, but. Yeah, his cousin. Who was that? Zach Ronaldo. I didn't know that. 
You've yeah. never told me this. Pretty sure we talked about when he was in Nashville. Mm. <laughs> okay, well, I, I, must have, I must have killed those brain cells. I don't remember that. I didn't know that. All right. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Uh, we're a little bit different style of players, though, I would say. Well, sometimes. I mean... <laughs> Let me check the stats now. I, I do have it up. Carolina. Hey, <laughs> come on. Well, I'm just curious. Come I'm on. Curious myself. Come on. Nice. Petro. Yeah. It's like you, you had a couple of points here, a couple of points there. I love this stat so. line. Does All right. have it? Well, while, while Jay's looking up the stat line, we're going to grab one more break here on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Jay Krupp, Josh Petrantonio, Tom oh. Callahan. We'll be back with more in a moment. All right, back here on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show, Tom Callahan, Jay Krupp, Josh Petrantonio, wrapping things up here in just a little bit. But uh, So, Jay, what did our delve into the uh, mathematical treasure trove that is the stats on your phone reveal? Oh, Petro, what, 56 games, 86 points, 93 pims. He used to be a bit of a bit of a tough guy, huh? A little Crazy. bit. Crazy. I mixed yeah. it up a bit. <laughs> <laughs> He's at 999 shots on goal career. Thousand. Next shot. Probably going to go in the net. It, I Thousand shot. To. It has to go in the net. It does. Imagine. It's going to. I mean. Far. He's going to come down the They're all going side, in lately. Forehand. Far bar. And thousand shot <laughs> in the back of the net. You hear it. I'm calling it. Okay. And don't shoot the puck unless you think it's going to <laughs> Don't shoot the puck. I'm calling it. Don't shoot. <laughs> Somehow Josh finished the year with 999 shots. <laughs> Pretty unbelievable. Oh, man. That's that's uh, career, though. Yeah, yeah. It, uh, you know what? It's I mean, oh, it's I thought been, that was last weekend. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it it kind of felt like it. I mean, you got your line was just flying out there. You guys are everywhere. Every time I turn around, you had the puck, yeah. and it seemed like it was going. Yeah, he was hungry. I was grumpy. Yeah. I was a little grumpy gills this week. I like that. <laughs> you, you were, and maybe we need a little more grumpy No, we Josh, do. But, you know. We do. We used to, so in Nashville, we actually used to say that about Shea Weber, because when Shea was not pissed off, he was almost inert. And we, we used to call it angry Shea. When you got angry Shea... No one could stop him. He was stronger than everybody else on the ice. I call that age he, he cheddar. Was, yeah, he yeah, was, but there's like a fine but, line. Like Friday, I was so <laughs> far know. gone. Yeah, oh, he looked great at morning skate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There, there's a, there's definitely a happy medium there between being happy go lucky and a little bit playing on a little bit of an edge, like mm. too happy go lucky or too loose, and and two on the other side of the coin. And well, Friday. Happened. Yeah. You don't finish the game. But, I mean, there's something to be said for tone setting, too, right? Like, Motor City is a team. You got three and three coming up against those guys talking last weekend. Um, I mean, you can't just let them think they're going to have an easy skate for a weekend. Oh, no. Not here, at least. Yeah, no. Maybe up in that rink. (laughs) Well, and I don't even know about that. I mean, it seems like they just... just didn't have it together nearly as much and honestly I, I, mean, was, dude, I was a little surprised on Sunday they weren't didn't push back more I, I thought mean, they would it's got well, it was get, a closer game right so they couldn't really obviously we knew who was behind the bench that game mm. yeah they couldn't they couldn't <laughs> just kidding <laughs> at, at that point they're trying to salvage any point they can get right. out of the weekend and <laughs> I mean, dude. They were in the game, you the know, game up until yeah, 58 I don't know. seconds left. Got to deal with J Max line, then Petro's line, then all. Oh, here you go. And now you got to deal with Wick, Sturge, and Swan. Okay, this is fun. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I mean, you just got to get old. Yeah, you keep rolling well. Especially three and three. It doesn't get old for me, I'll tell you that much. It's fun to watch. <laughs> yeah. I have a great time. And, and sometimes I know, Jay, you like to switch up the lines a little bit. Sometimes you throw me a curveball. I do. I you do. know? Known for that. Yeah, he's got the old uh, deck of cards up his sleeve. <laughs> yep. I'm like, and here's Petro, Dozer, and who's Jimmy Smith? Where did that guy come from? I got a two, a four, an eight, a ten, and a six. <laughs> I win. <Yeah. laughs> uh, 
Let's say what, whatever works, man. You put them in a blender, you hit frappe, and out comes a winning combination. So <laughs> that's uh, which is also kind of nice. Again, I mean, you know, the depth of the team has really enabled the the River Dragons to kind of get away with that. So uh, I'd say, yeah, I would say we can get away with that every now and then. Yeah, four, yeah. four losses. We, we managed to make it work. So I got to ask, where did the five come from? How did that evolve this year? That five forwards are in the first power play unit. How did that? Start? Well, we put everyone's name in a hat. <laughs> <laughs> and we drew them out. Um, no, I don't. Uh, oh, it, Boomer does not like the power play. and <laughs> He doesn't like having a power play. Yeah. He wants to just roll the lines and not mess things up and maybe switch out D-men here and there or whatever. Um, and we were kind of just pretty, messing around. <laughs> well, we were pretty cold at the beginning of the year. Um, yeah, we were. Pretty cold at the beginning of the year on the power play, and we were kind of just like sitting there the one day, and it's like, I wonder what happens if we just like put a couple forwards up hey, there. Hey, 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 pick your poison. I mean, you want to come shut down my side? You got to deal with. You you can try and shut down me and Morsey on the one side, which okay, <laughs> but then on the flip side, you've got J Mac and Storage, and then you've got Dozer, and now we're moving around and doing all this stuff. It's pretty I mean, electric. You, just, you keep something together long enough and long enough and you you build chemistry and I mean seems to be working okay, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's fun sometimes minute and a half of just constant cycling in the <laughs> offensive zone on the power play and chances off of that cycle and moving the puck around. It's it's wild. Boomer, Boomer calls it the two step. <laughs> you know how when two step, you're slow, you're slow and then boom boom. So when we were it, on that win that. streak, I was like looking at Jerome a few times, laughing because we were up like eleven to nothing, and I was like, "Man, we look like the Globe Trotters right now." Look at our first power play unit, and they were just like chucking sauce over guys' heads straight on the tape, and then doing like a spinorama to someone in the slot with a wide open net. Instead of shooting it, no, we're gonna go back door, then put it in to make it look more pretty. And I just remember like, man, this power play unit is pretty good. They are. And you know what? So, Jay, now you're making me go to my stats computer here because I want to look at this because we've done some pretty amazing things. But I keep all of this stuff for season highs and lows. So the most goals we've scored in a game is 11. We've only done that once. However, uh, just checking the clock real quick. We got time. So the River Dragons this season have scored eight goals in a game six times. <laughs> Scored seven goals in a game six times. Have had more than 50 shots in a game, let's see, 13 times with a high of 64. And oddly enough, every number between 50 and 64 we've done once, except for 51 shots on goal in a game, which we have done six times. I'm That's curious how many me. games we've gotten outshot, if we have at all. Uh, I can tell you. Because I had Zach I look it, it up. I think it happened once. I had Zach look it up the year we won the Cup in Carolina. We got outshot three games the whole year, and we won two of those three games. So right now we've been outshot three times, and actually two of them have been within the last month, um, and we're 3-0 and mm. when being outshot. <laughs> so, so not bad. And at no point have the shots been even this year. So it's it's interesting. I look over some of the records. Even when this one's kind of crazy to me, when allowing four goals, 5-0-1. Oh, so Boomer always says, I only want to allow two goals. By the way, when we do that, we're 8-0. No. But we've only done it eight times. <laughs> so that one's, <laughs> that one's interesting. But yeah, so uh, as a matter of fact, the only... <laughs> <laughs> the only regulation losses we have, and we have four of them, three of them have been allowing five goals, and one has been allowing six or more. And that's it. So you have to score five to beat the River Dragons, is the moral of the story mm -hmm. in regulation. It's not, that's tough. It's kind of a lot. Yeah. It's more than a few. <laughs> so, but uh, yeah, because I was just curious about that. And then he started saying, oh, the highs, the lows, and all that. I started thinking about the shots because I was going over this earlier today, and I thought, man, it's. It's just the the numbers this year are insane. Yeah, I would with the agree. talent on this team. I would agree. Yeah, we got a <clears throat> we got a very very deep squad. 
And no guy in that locker room is any more or less important than the guy beside him. And I think that's our biggest asset in there. All right. Well, we're, we've reached the end of another show, guys. Any uh, any concluding words before this three-game trip up to Michigan here for Easter weekend? Yeah, the uh, Pepsi Center in Quebec City is probably my favorite rink I've ever skated in. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> nice. Nice. I like it. It comes full circle. Yeah. Hmm. That's got to be a nice. That's a nice new barn. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I played the Quebec tournament there in Pee Wee. I was 12, so it seemed bigger than it probably actually was. But It's still pretty big. I think it's 21,000 seats. It would oh, be the it? biggest building in the NHL. Oh, wow. Yeah. Hmm. Right next to Dallas. Dallas is cavernous. That place is so huge. But, yeah, that one's like 19,000 American Airlines Arena. Oh, wow. It's crazy big. The press box is four miles from the ice. It's Texas. Yeah. Uh, everything's got to be bigger. Texas. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, including the hockey rink. So, Jay, anything you want to leave us with? Nah. That's no. all I got. I like it. All Sweet right. Sweet and raw, boom. Yeah, there you go. Nice job, guys. Thanks for uh, thanks for dropping by. We appreciate you Yeah, being thanks here. for having us, Kelly. All right. We're going to just take one more quick break back to wrap it up, and we'll tell you about Legends Weekend on the other side of it. This is the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. Back to wrap things up here on the Behind the Bench Coaches Show. My thanks to... Our guests this evening, Josh Petrantonio and Jay Krupp. And I want to remind everybody, the River Dragons are on the road this weekend. As a matter of fact, remember that Sunday game was moved to Thursday. So the River Dragons play Thursday, Friday, and Saturday on the road. Two in Port Huron, one sandwiched in the middle in Motor City. Then we're back home April 5th and 6th on the weekend. And it's going to be a big weekend because it's Legends weekend. The Legends game will be taking place on April the 6th, that Saturday, doors open at 3.30, puck drop approximately 4.30. So if you want to come down and see the legends of not only the River Dragons, but also the Cottonmouths, come on down and join us for that. Your ticket is valid for both games, so keep that in mind as well. But all weekend long, we're going to be saluting Columbus sports legends. It's going to be an awful lot of fun. And then I want to remind everybody, our final home game of the season is going to be coming up. On April 13th, it's against the Carolina Thunderbirds. It's our final Chick-fil-A Midland Kissin' 99.3 Family 4-Pack Night. Just $40 gets you four tickets to a game, four hot dogs, four popcorn, four Pepsi products, and four Chick-fil-A coupons. Only available through the River Dragons office. You cannot get that at the box office. Give us a call. 706-507-4625. That's 507-4625. All right, everybody. Thanks for tuning us in. Once again, you've been listening to the Behind the Bench Coaches Show.